In this video, we're going to continue to build an element of our watch. We're going to focus on the inner ring that you see right here on the watch and the reflection that is part of that. You'll see here inside of the bat schematic, this is the main setup of the end result of the watch. If we go into the schematic for this action, you'll see all the different elements that end up creating the watch. Time has been spent to organize and tidy up the schematic and also hide different objects so we can show you exactly the end result of what we're about to create. You see the base that we created earlier, but there's the ring with the reflections on it. This is what we're about to create. Let's start by creating a graphic material. So let's bring out a color source into our batch schematic. This is a simple white frame that is HD. And then we're going to add a GMAS tracer and connect our white source into the GMAS tracer. Hit the tilde key to go into our schematic for our GMAS tracer. Let's drag a G-mask ellipse into the schematic. Go to the end result. As we've done before, hold the Alt and the Shift key and click and drag to create a perfect circle shape. Now going into the G-mask tracer schematic, select the axis and the G-mask we just created and hit Control D to duplicate it. Then with its axis selected, we want to scale it down. I'll bring it down to about 80%. And then on the mass parameter, set the color to be zero. So now we have our graphic shape, our circle created. Let's go back to our batch schematic and add an action node. Control N to add a new input, a new layer. Then connect the matte output from the GMAS tracer to the matte input for our new layer. Let's go into our action tool, select it. And let's just rotate this image so you can see what we have created. Let's enable the shading options from our node preferences. Now to convert this to a geometry, we're gonna use a displacement map. Let's go back out to the batch schematic. We're gonna use a gradient, a basic gradient with the circle. So back out in our batch schematic, select the GMAS tracer and the color source and duplicate them. And then with our new duplicated GMAS tracer selected, hit the tilde key to go into its schematic. Delete the second shape that we created. So now we just have one. And then we want to select the axis for the shape that's left behind and scale it down. In fact, we'll scale this really small. I'll set the value to five. Now we want to add the gradient to this. So hit the A key to get your add points tool and then click on the edge of our mask and drag away. Make the gradient very large, almost fill in the entire frame. So back out in our batch schematic, select our action node, and then hit Control N again to create another layer, another input. Now drag the matte output from our GMAS tracer, the blue output, and feed it into a red input for our new layer. Let's go into our action schematic and delete the automated image that was created. We just want to use it as a source. Then select our original circle image, Let's go down to our node bin. Now we want to access the displacement map. So hit the D key with your cursor over the bin and drag a displacement map into the schematic. Then let's go back to our result view. Go to the object parameters for the displacement map and then start to adjust the Z value for the displacement map. As you can see, our image is now a geometry being controlled by the displacement map. To smooth out the shape, let's adjust our softness parameter. Let's take it to 20. And then let's set the Z value to a minus 50. Now we want to add a reflection map to this geometry. So I'll go back out to my batch schematic. Let's create the texture that we're going to use for our reflection map. Let's go to the effects node bin, drag a substance noise node into the schematic from the Substance Nodes dialog box. Select the Caustic option, which is the third from the left on the top. Hit F4 with the node selected to see the end result. Select our Action node once again, and let's create a third layer, Control N. Then connect our Caustic Substance Noise to the main red input for our new layer. Let's go back into our Action Schematic. Once again, delete the automated image that comes in when you add that to the action node. 
With the circle image selected in the schematic and our new caustic image selected in our media list, go to our node bin and hit the R key, then drag a reflection map into the scene. Make sure you have the top axis for everything selected and let's go to the result view. And as we start to rotate our geometry, we can see the reflection taking place in the geometry. Let's go back out to our batch schematic and while holding the equal key, click on the action node to bring up our context view dialog box. I'll set the end result of action to be the context two. Hit spacebar two, now we see the end result of our action node because it is the context view number two. Go back out to the batch schematic, select the gradient tool and then hit space two again so now we have our gradient tool selected, but we're looking at the end result of the action node. Now, as we manipulate the gradient, we can see the end result of what is happening to our geometry. Let's go down to the gradient menu in the detailed area. Now in the gradient curve, I'll grab the center control point and start to manipulate that by dragging up. If you wanna see the end result of what the gradient actually looks like, hit the F4 key. You can see the curve adjustment is affecting the softness of my gradient. And then hit spacebar two to return back to the context view of our action output. And as we continue to manipulate the curve, we can see how it is affecting and changing the geometry. And as you adjust the scale of the gradient, that also will be affecting the end result. Now our geometry has the curve looked with a shiny reflection inside of it. Hit escape to go back out to our batch schematic. Select the action node and then hit the tilde key to go into our action schematic. With everything selected, let's duplicate this by hitting control D. Then select only the axis that is part of this new duplication, the top axis, and reset all of its parameters. Then take the original axis that we had from our geometry and then make that the parent to the axis we just reset. Then make sure you select this new axis from the duplicated version go back to the end result, and then proportionally scale it up. Back in the schematic, select the displacement map once again, and then adjust the Z value for this displacement to see the result. I'll take this to about negative 185 for the Z value. Go back to the schematic, select the axis for this, and let's scale it even more. Go back and forth between the scale and the Z position to have it look the way you want. Go back to our schematic for action, select the top axis for everything, the parent. And now you can rotate it on X to see the effect that is taking place. Let's go back into the action schematic and select the axis that is above our reflection map for the duplicated geometry, the nodes that are on the right. Back in the end result view, now start adjusting your scale, increasing it so it's very large. In fact, take the value all the way up to 1,000, somewhere around there. Now the larger ring has a very smooth reflection on it. Let's go back to our action schematic. Select your top axis once again, and then go back to the main view and start rotating it on the X value to see what we just created. So this is how the inner ring of the watch was created. Well, that's going to do it for this video.